Item number, SCP-036. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. Once every year, a mobile task force is dispatched from Containment Command 02 and data expunged to Site 22A to defend the runway and airport located there. The civilian facility is to be cleared of all non-SCP personnel by 0400 hours of September 23rd and none are allowed to return until sunrise the next day. On October 1st, all civilians must be evacuated again before sunrise and will not be allowed on to Site 22A until the return of the pilgrimage flight. Pilgrims in transit from the arrival flight awaiting departure on the pilgrim flight may only be cross-examined by researchers with level 3 security level clearance or higher. Description SCP-036 includes the location Site 22A, a small airport in the Mosul region of northern Iraq, and Site 22B, the destination of passengers boarding at Site 22A. The key components of SCP-036 are the arrival flight, a passenger plane that varies in make and model from year to year that arrives shortly before dawn on September 23rd. It appears on radar about 30 to 40 kilometers away from Site 22A. When it lands, pilgrims exit the plane and enter the terminal. No crew have ever left the plane. Observations have only revealed a masked pilot and co-pilot. This plane leaves quickly after pilgrims exit. It does not wait for clearance for takeoff, nor does it identify itself upon approaching for landing. The Pilgrims People of the Yazidi faith that exit the arrival plane, who are said to be undergoing the Kiras Gurahin. Each year, they are examined and identified as various people of the Yazidi faith that have died during the previous year. This is done through birth certificates, photo IDs, specific knowledge questions, and when possible, fingerprinting. Most have been known to be friendly and amicable, though most are reluctant to give details about the Kiras Gurahin. In the past, all have shown to be unable to recognize family and friends, or been able to remember any information beyond what short-term memory would normally allow. In the late afternoon of September 23rd, most pilgrims begin to emphasize how important it is that their pilgrimage must begin. At that time, they file onto the pilgrimage flight plane and depart, never to be seen again. The Pilgrimage Flight A passenger plane provided by SCP personnel for the transport of the pilgrims. It is manned by a crew of trained Yazidi holy men. The crew are typically never able to elaborate upon details of the pilgrimage, or what the Kiras Gurahin actually is. SCP equipment on board function optimally, but recorded data will only slightly increase our understanding of the pilgrimage each year. Though the flight is gone for seven days, the crew and recorded data are only able to account for a few hours. Days are missing from time recording equipment and cameras, though nothing abnormal is ever observed. The plane disappears from radar and visual contact is lost about 50 to 60 kilometers away from Site 22A until it returns about sunrise on October 1st. Site 22B The destination of the pilgrimage plane. It is a small airport consisting of a runway and single building located at coordinates data expunged. It has only ever been observed by pilgrimage crew and cameras on the plane. It does not appear on satellite images and attempts to reach it on foot have failed, once with disastrous results. Cameras have trouble focusing on the area, as the heat from the ground usually causes a mirage-like visual effect on all objects more than a few dozen meters from the plane. A flyover with an SCP reconnaissance plane several weeks before the pilgrimage revealed undeveloped land and what looked like an ancient stone statue. In the 1990s, SCP Mobile Task Force Sigma-4 attempted to reach Site-22B during the time of the pilgrimage. Upon the approach, communication was lost and the task force was never heard from again. No other exploration attempts are advised during the seven-day pilgrimage. Originally, the Kurdish-speaking Yazidi people around Mosul secretly performed the pilgrimage themselves. Pilgrims from the east were escorted by masked armed guards on camel back into the care of Yazidi holy men. It has been explained that the holy men would then take the pilgrims west to their land of the dead, where the pilgrims would wait to be reborn back into the Yazidi people. The Kiras Gurahin, literally Kurdish for changing garments, is used to describe the belief of reincarnation that lesser souls of the Yazidi undergo. 
While this actual pilgrimage was done in secret, a symbolic pilgrimage and Kiras Gurahin are performed every year at this time by other Yazidi. During the 1960s, land acquisition by Kurds and Muslims, attacks by Turks, and punitive laws by the Islamic Iraqi government restricted the movements and customs of the Yazidi. During that time, the Foundation stepped in and offered aid in the way of an advantageous clause that granted SCP planes unrestricted access to airport facilities in the area. Almost immediately, mysterious planes carrying pilgrims from the east began landing at the local airport, and an elusive airport at the destination appeared as well. Item Number SCP-052 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Although it is not possible to remove SCP-052 from the New York subway system, its predictable behavior allows the Foundation to prevent the public from encountering it. The 59th Street ABCD station is to be closed to the public from 11pm to 1am, on Saturdays and Sundays, under the pretext of track maintenance. During that time, the station is to be staffed with agents from Mobile Task Force Gamma-6. Agents have been ordered to prevent accidental public access to the station, and to capture anyone seen leaving SCP-052. Anyone who has been on SCP-052 must be transported to Site-21 for debriefing and processing. Members of the public who see SCP-052 may be released after the administration of a Class B amnestic. Description: SCP-052 is a Type R4 New York City subway train. Official records indicate this train was built in 1932 and decommissioned for scrap in 1975. Nevertheless, it continues to appear on the Uptown AD track at the 59th Street and 8th Avenue station at 11.57 p.m. every Saturday. The train is in perfect condition and labeled as an A-train. SCP-052 appears at the designated time, opens its doors to accept and discharge passengers for approximately five minutes, then closes its doors and disappears. It does not appear to ever contain passengers, except for those leaving the train during its appearance. The majority of subjects that have boarded SCP-052 have not been recovered. Passengers leaving SCP-052 claim to have boarded on various dates, from 1976 up to 2204. The latter claims he thought SCP-052 was a 300th anniversary special train. Subjects retain no knowledge of time on board. Addendum: Passengers leaving SCP-052 must be brought to Site-21 and interrogated to determine their origin and possible threat to the current time stream. Generally, passengers from the past may be given Class A amnestics and reintegrated into society. Passengers from the future must be held indefinitely. Site-21 currently holds 26 recovered passengers. Despite our protocols to prevent public access, we are still receiving subjects from the future. Although some are from alternate timelines, it is possible SCP-052 will begin to appear at another time and place requiring expanded containment. The Foundation has placed several subjects onto the train in an attempt to understand its activities when not visible. Test 052-1 May 31, 2009 Agent placed on train. Not recovered as of present date. Test 052-2 June 6, 2009 Agent enters train. Not recovered, as he apparently returned to 1980 and was killed in a confrontation with Test 052-3 See notes on recovered passenger 052-4 After Test 052-3, O5 Command issued orders that no further agents should be risked as passengers on SCP-052. Consideration has been given to using Class D personnel in their place, but the risk of releasing them into the past is too great. Log of recovered passengers in Foundation custody Passenger 052-1 Entered train July 14th, 2012 Recovered March 8th, 2008 Notes An accountant, on the way home from the theater when she entered the train, 052-1 has expressed surprise and dismay to have traveled back in time four years, but appears to be otherwise unchanged and unharmed. She has been determined to currently exist in this timeline, and must be held indefinitely to prevent unwanted temporal effects. Passenger 052-2 Entered train, June 12, 1976 Recovered March 15, 2008 Notes Subject entered train when lost on the way to Studio 54. 
Although unharmed and not a temporal threat, 052-2 is being held as the examining psychiatrist believes 32 years is too long a period over which to facilitate successful reintegration. Passenger 052-3 Entered train December 6, 2014 Recovered June 20, 2009 Notes A tourist from Jacksonville, Florida Subject 052-3 now speaks Albanian instead of English Held due to O5 orders regarding subjects from the future as well as possible reintegration difficulties. Passenger 052-4 Entered train June 13, 2009 Recovered June 27, 2009 Notes Agent from test 052-3 Agent returned with his hand surgically removed and a note in his pocket with the message Send no more Subject does not remember his experience on the train but when subjected to hypnosis Revealed Data expunged. Passenger 052-5. Agent entered train at unknown future date in violation of protocol. On July 11, 2009, body of subject was violently thrown from the train, landing 10 meters away. On examination, subject was found to have been data expunged. Whether security should be increased to prevent subject from entering SCP-052 is under consideration. Passenger 052-6. Claims to be a level 4 supervisor from the SCP Federation, who entered the train in December 2124. Subject had been administered a Class A Prime Amnestic prior to boarding, in a successful attempt to avoid the fate of passengers 052-4 and 052-5. Recovered February 6, 2010. As he will never be released from Foundation custody, O5 Command has approved sharing otherwise classified information about other artifacts in our possession in hopes of gaining new methods of containment and becoming aware of future security breaches. Agent has been cooperative and claims that it is good we do not know how to open SCP-699. Subject turned visibly pale and refused to discuss this item further. To be a survivor of the Great Zombie Plague of 2092 caused by an SCP-008 containment breach. That SCP can be killed by data expunged Permission to try this has been denied by O5. That he worked for Dr. Jack Bright. Item number SCP 240. Object class Safe. Special containment procedures SCP 240 is to be kept in the secure artifact storage facility in Site 77. Due to its age and delicate construction, SCP 240 is to be contained in a vacuum sealed container with humidity and temperature levels constantly monitored and controlled. The mouthpiece is to be permanently covered. No subjects are permitted to enter SCP-240's containment chamber. Description: SCP-240 is a vehicle capable of air travel. It is constructed from a wooden rod which the operator sits in the middle of, a mouthpiece connected to a pipe device, and a large canvas sack which contains a porthole for exhaust fumes to exit. The words Morsum Kite have been painted on the spot the operator is intended to sit on. The words From Many Comes Might are sewn into the canvas. When activated, SCP-240 is capable of flying for approximately twice the duration of the user exhaling into its mouthpiece. Following this, it will enter a slow descent and ultimately land. Although it can only take off from land, Testing has shown that SCP-240 is capable of landing on water and heavier-than-air gases. For every one newton of force the user exerts into SCP-240, there will be 50 newtons of thrust in return. It produces dust emissions within the barrels. These emissions contain minerals such as nickel, copper, gold, platinum, potassic feldspar, and pyrox ferroite. However, the steel drums do not appear to have any connection to the mouthpiece or piping. Additionally, users utilizing SCP-240 have occasionally reported tasting ammonia, sulfur, and having hot gas rush through causing severe lung discomfort. Post-test medical examinations have not shown any corroborating damage to the subject's bodies. SCP-240 was discovered in 1927 in the possession of the Morsum Space Society an organization dedicated to astrological research, following a raid on their headquarters due to bootlegging charges. 
Notes recovered during the operation indicated the bootlegging had been done to finance SCP-240. It was found inside the home and taken as evidence by the UIU. Its extra-normal capabilities were not discovered until three years later, when an evidence clerk casually blew into SCP-240 and was thrown across the room, suffering a broken nose and three fractured ribs. SCP-240 was immediately transferred to the Foundation while a non-functional replica was handed over to the UIU. Due to the age and relative obscurity of SCP-240, it was not difficult to manufacture documentation, discrediting it as a hoax. Addendum Utilizing fiber optic camera technology, Foundation researchers were able to place cameras within SCP-240's mouthpiece during flight. Over the course of the examination, the camera recorded a location in space, which appeared very similar to the solar system. However, the Earth and Moon were missing, and Venus had several possibly artificial satellites around it. All orbits were moving notably faster, at a scale similar to the scale of the input-output of SCP-240. Further testing is currently being conducted. Item Number SCP-265 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Foundation Site 54, 109, and 110 have been provided SCP-265 specific sub-task forces in order to study SCP-265. Each houses a small fleet of tactical aircraft, as well as agents trained in standard Foundation information gathering and interrogation techniques. Civilian cover stories and disguises are preferred. Local news outlets are to be scanned for signs of SCP-265, and teams are to investigate possible encounters. Specific protocol is to be arranged on an incident-by-incident -incident basis. Agents are not to instigate violence towards SCP-265 until a better understanding of its nature can be ascertained. Description SCP-265 appears to be a Series 1 GAZ M21 Volga automobile, devoid of any license plating, logos, or other identifying marks. It is painted black with white-rimmed wheels and appears to be in pristine condition, regardless of environment. Some accounts note that it has white curtains in all but the front windows. Note that the production of the GAZ M21 ceased in 1970, with Series 1 being produced between 1958 and 1959. SCP-265 is absent of human occupants and appears to travel under its own power. Other details vary between encounters. It's common for individuals to report that SCP-265 is silent while traveling, while others hear its engine idling for an extended period of time before noticing it nearby. Similarly, some encounters result in the vehicle leaving physical evidence such as tread marks on roads, where other encounters leave no physical traces. SCP-265 nearly always appears in scenarios which commonly elicit dread and paranoia in subjects, such as following lone travelers and idling in home driveways for a short while before driving off. SCP-265 has been encountered throughout rural Poland, far from urban centers but occasionally passing through small rural communities with populations under 500. It has been encountered at various times late in the day, with confirmed encounters having occurred at any time between 1829 hours and 0813 hours. There have only been two confirmed encounters of the phenomenon between 0900 and 1700 hours. SCP-265 normally moves at about 65 kilometers an hour, approximately 40 miles per hour but has been recorded exceeding 400 kilometers an hour, or approximately 250 miles per hour, in isolated instances. Addendum Foundation Capture Attempt At 2311, on date undisclosed, a vehicle matching SCP-265's description was seen idling outside a Foundation-controlled weather station at after visually confirming the lack of human occupancy, a pursuit team including one helicopter and four high-performance off-road vehicles were dispatched from nearby Site-109 to follow and attempt to capture the vehicle. SCP-265 quickly accelerated to an excess of 200 kilometers an hour and showed an unexplainable degree of maneuverability. The helicopter continued pursuit until SCP-265 vanished into a densely forested area. The following search of the area found no trace of any vehicle, 
but incomplete human remains were discovered four kilometers away in a waterlogged area. Addendum. Similar phenomenon. Given multiple occurrences of SCP-265 in human remains, and the similarity between their respected vehicles, it's possible that SCP-265 may be a variant or distantly related to phenomena observed in SCP-2613. Investigation into both anomalies is ongoing. Additional documentation. Below is attached a translated series of excerpts collected from civilian sources, including audio interviews, law enforcement, news outlets, and personal diaries. This list is incomplete. Please see Dr. Seidelman for access to full records. File SCP-265 Sample of Assorted Records 1960 to Present Record Incident Transcript 265-1973-43 Recovered from Police Records of Summary An Isolated Event Victim was taking a walk between villages in the late afternoon around 1300 hours. A black Volga automobile with white rims appeared behind him and following at a low speed. According to the civilian, the vehicle was unusually loud and accelerated to hit him, fracturing his leg as he dove for cover. He played dead as the vehicle completed a three-point turn to face him again and waited for several minutes before it drove off. Civilian claimed that the interior was empty of any driver or passenger. Record Diary of Civilian 265 1974 811 Excerpt recovered from archives of Unusual event. We pursued the Volga for nine minutes in two cars, during which it led us further from the town. It was growing dark, but we were confident that we could catch it. Piatek shot at it but he missed or the car was bulletproof. He swears that he did not miss. It then turned sharply to the right and drove into the lake. We stopped and began writing the report on the side of the road. After three or so minutes, Gorecki drew our attention towards the lake and we saw lights emerging from the other side and red taillights driving off into the woods on the far side. There are only two sets of tire tracks. We swear on the lives of our mothers that this is true and myself and Gorecki request to resign. Record Audio 265 1982 731 9 minutes and 17 seconds to 11 minutes and 1 second. Recovered from police records of The couple claimed that the vehicle, an unmarked Volga limousine painted black with white tires, appeared behind them while they were traveling. It followed them for several minutes before ramming them repeatedly and driving off. Neither could describe the driver, and both said that the offending vehicle made no noise and left no tracks. Record Diary of Civilian 265-1989-811 Excerpt recovered from archives of I awoke just past midnight and walked downstairs to fetch a drink of water. Once downstairs, I noticed lights through the window the car from a few weeks ago was back at the end of the drive, by the street. Its headlights were facing the house, and it was idling loudly. I was afraid that somebody was out there, and I almost went to wake up Piot and the children, but I couldn't convince myself to move. After ten minutes, the car backed away and drove away. It looked just like the car my grandfather had at his old shop, but black and brand new. I will tell the police in the morning. Record. Incident transcript. 265 1990 112 Recovered from police records of On 10 29 1995, the citizen claimed to see an unconscious person in the back seat of a vehicle fitting the aforementioned description of a black M21 Volga and provided a description of the person's appearance. This was later determined to be very similar to who disappeared from his house near the town of on the same day 41 years ago. Record Handwritten Excerpt 265 1995 411 Recovered from police records of I woke up around 3 in the morning and saw a car outside of my front door. It was a black Volga automobile with curtains and white wheels. I do not know why I got into the car. I just felt like I needed to get into the back seat, so I did. 
I remember the door was heavy when I opened it, and the inside was clean and smelled like something familiar that I cannot place. I don't remember anyone else in the car. I remember seeing water out in front of me in the headlights, that I was moving towards it, and the lights all went out, and I felt the car crash into it and go under. I held my breath as the water came over my head and opened my eyes and saw terrible things. Everything was so quiet. Things watched me with sad faces in the dark. There were so many. They touched me, and I could see them begging me to illegible. I remember screaming and beating the door, and the door opened and I fell out onto the grass. I remember spitting water and somebody finding me a little while later, and I fell asleep in the car to the hospital. I'm so afraid. There were black rails and horses. They're waiting for everyone to come. A ship under everything else, darker than anything. And the others are so sad. They want to touch and be happy again, but they're so far down. And it's so dark and cold. They can't come back. Item number. SCP-276. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-276 is to be indefinitely moored at site docks, with access given only to personnel with level 3 clearance or higher. Considering its unique qualities, no objects originating from an earlier, or possibly later, era than our own are to be taken onto SCP-276 due to the potential for loss of valuable materials. Regular maintenance is to be carried out after SCP-276 has been made incapable of operation due to containment issues. Description SCP-276 has a variable shape, size, and mass, but always appears to be a nautical vessel of make and model relevant to whatever era it exists in. Currently, it takes the form of a large sailing schooner, 19.93 meters or 304.9 feet in length, and weighing 1,360 metric tons. Under normal conditions, SCP-276 operates as a standard sailing vessel, capable of achieving 16.2 knots at optimal conditions, regardless of its current manifestation. On SCP-276's bridge, near the wheel of the ship, is a throttle labeled forward, back, and back again. Usage of any of these functions will activate SCP-276's ability to travel through time, while taking anyone currently on the vessel as well. This ability is only limited by the requirement that the era in question possess some form of boat. Attempts made to travel before the emergence of human life have failed, as well as trips made into the far future. The throttle will act in relation to the current era, with the exception of back again, which will return SCP-276 to modern time. It is unknown if operation of SCP-276 can fundamentally alter history, due to the retroactive nature of time. Any changes made would have already taken effect, and all current research into SCP-276 is related to making sure that any possible manipulation of the timeline does not occur. Of note is the anti-anachronistic nature of SCP-276. Beyond its tendency to change its form to the respective era it resides in, all non-human objects on SCP-276 will alter as well to become time-appropriate. A flashlight taken back to the early 1700s will revert to a more primitive form of illumination, such as a gas lamp. Organic life is unaffected, with the exception of creatures that either do not exist yet or have ceased to exist. In both cases, the animal will become another species from the closest taxonomic rank it shares. Dead persons brought to modern times are similarly affected, becoming an entirely different person. Genealogical testing reveals that the subjects are data expunged. Note, SCP-276 is not, I repeat, not to be used as a recreational device, especially involving exploitation of SCP-276's temporal qualities, temporarily restricting access to level 4 personnel until further notice. Dr. Addendum, as of the newly formed Mobile Task Force Row 5, Stitch in Time, is to be assigned to and given full security clearance involving use of SCP-276. After taking into consideration SCP-276's ability to fix anachronisms and errors in time, 
All missions involving temporal tampering are to be headed by row 5. Item number SCP-317 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-317-1 is to be preserved in a vat of liquid nitrogen. Requests for tissue samples from SCP-3171 must be made in writing. All research into tissue samples from SCP-3171 must be in compliance with Class V biohazard protocols. Examination of SCP-3172 must be done in Class III cleanroom facilities. Requests for examination of 3172 must be made in writing. SCP-3173 has been disassembled. The parts are stored in separate locations. Requests for examination of 3173 must be made in writing to two separate O5 level personnel. No two components of SCP-3173 may be brought within 100 kilometers of each other. Description SCP-3171 is the cadaver of a sapient reptilian entity tentatively identified as a previously unknown species of Pachycephalosaurid. Subject was bipedal, female, and three meters tall, and wore clothing made from synthetic polymers. Subject also wore corrective lenses. Subject was largely herbivorous and had prehensile digits. Subject's metabolism was adapted to a higher atmospheric oxygen content and therefore, subject wore a respirator device when not in its quarters. Biochemical analysis post-mortem, rhodopsins, mitochondria, homeobox genes, cytochrome P450, confirms that SCP-3171 shared common ancestry with current Earth life. Autopsy records are available in Archive 317B-685. In the 40 days between its arrival in Foundation custody, at its death from a lactobacillus infection, SCP-3171 learned to communicate via a combination of sign language, crude vocalizations, and drawings. Video Archive 317-B36 shows interview sessions with SCP-3171. Drawings made by SCP-3171 are available in Archive 317-B42, General Access, Basic Anatomical Figures, Interactions between itself and Foundation personnel. Demonstration of knowledge of mathematics. Demonstration of knowledge of chemistry. Demonstration of knowledge of nuclear physics. And Archive 317B58. Restricted access. Circuit diagrams. Mechanical schematics. Data expunged. SCP-3172 is the personal effects of SCP-3171. A tunic, a robe, a tool belt, six tools, corrective lenses, an oxygen mask, three empty oxygen tanks, a fire-damaged document pouch made from synthetic polymers and its fire-damaged contents, and a fire-damaged digital camera whose contents were unrecoverable. SCP-3173 is the fire-damaged remains of what is believed to have been a time machine which SCP-3171 was attempting to repair at the time it was taken into custody by the Foundation. Preliminary testing of the intact components revealed data expunged, at which point all testing was halted and SCP-3173 was disassembled. Note: There's something wrong with this one, people. A technological civilization should have left some trace in the stratigraphic record. If there was a Holocene epic before us, where did the evidence go? Dr. It's not just the complete lack of trace in the fossil record. It's the species. How could it have been a pachycephalosaurid that developed intelligence? They were at best average for Cretaceous fauna. Why not a trudontid, an ornithomimid, or another small theropod? There's something going on here that we're missing. Dr. M. Item number. SCP-369 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-369 is to be monitored by time-lapse camera feed to be reviewed for anomalous behavior every 24 hours. Motion-sensitive perimeter alert devices should be placed at the borders of SCP-369 each time it relocates. 
with at least three Level 1 personnel nearby to behave as semi-active construction crew when under observation. Personnel are to avoid directly observing SCP-369 when no other potential observers are present, though indirect viewing through video or even mirrors has no effect, allowing SCP-369 to continue as normal. Under no circumstances should actual construction work be attempted on SCP-369, nor should the equipment around it be used. Upon loss of contact with SCP-369 when its task is finished, site monitoring should be repackaged and ready for transit to a new location. Once 24 hours have passed, all roads within 75 kilometers .6 miles, should be examined for construction work not matching work schedules of the regional government. Only paved roads are to be examined, beginning with sections of road with comparatively lower usage. Description SCP-369 is a migratory road construction zone, which repairs stretches of road left untended by repair crews. It generates non-functional look-alikes of several essential road construction vehicles, of note being a small steamroller and an earth mover, the latter being anything from a bobcat to a backhoe. The traffic cones present at the border of the effect are actual traffic cones, lacking any serial number or manufacturer's mark and always appear to have been in use for at least a few years. If removed from the site, the cones vanish when unobserved. The machines cannot be used or maintained, and testing has shown it unwise to try. The repair process takes up to four days, as the road undergoes a semi-organic healing process when not directly observed, resulting in mundane yet professional quality patches made to the pavement. No special properties have been observed in the stretches of road already visited by SCP-369. They resume weathering and wearing down like any normal road as soon as SCP-369 is not present. Tests with construction on and attempted disruption of SCP-369 have resulted every time with the subject being covered in liquid tar and data expunged until the bones and inorganic hard materials were ejected onto the roadside. Effect seems limited to paved United States roadways, and no line repainting is done. Addendum Attempts by Level 2 research staff to redirect SCP-369 to specific roadwork locations has been so far unsuccessful, though some progress has been made in trying to identify potential targets in advance. Item Number SCP-382 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-3821 is to be stored in a standard site containment room inside a 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5 meter plexiglass box of 5 centimeter thickness at minimum. A video camera is to be kept trained on it at all times, though this is merely for observational purposes. Due to the area of influence and deleterious nature of SCP-382's effect, it should only be removed from its enclosure for testing purposes, with staff observing from a remote location. No personnel, Class D or otherwise, should interact with SCP-3821 for more than two hours, unless accompanied by at least one armed agent. Description In its inactive state, SCP-3821 is a large baby carriage, manufactured in 19 by in England. Its age shows. Metal components are heavily rusted, the rubber of the tires is brittle, and the cushion is missing. SCP-3822 appears to be an infant, months old, extremely emaciated, with several injuries that seem to vary with each manifestation. On different occasions, SCP-3822 has shown heavy bruising, broken bones, and sometimes data expunged despite which 3822 could still make vocalizations, although it is unknown how this was possible. When SCP-3821 is not being interacted with, SCP-3822 manifests every to minutes, staying between and minutes. However, when a person places their hands on the handlebars of the carriage, 3822 will instantly manifest and the period of time of both disappearance and reappearance will decrease to approximately one second. Any person who makes visual contact with SCP-3821, from now on referred to as the subject, 
is compelled to approach it and place their hands on its handlebar. While manifesting only intermittently, SCP-3822 appears to compound the effect when the subject sees it. This effect does not transmit through video feeds, transparent objects, or anything else that would separate SCP-3821 and its victim. And once the subject is in contact with SCP-3821, no one else will be influenced until the subject has died and SCP-382 has reset. As soon as the subject comes into physical contact with SCP-3821 and SCP-3822 has manifested, they appear to enter a trance, in which they will propel SCP-3821 in a small circle and make noises directed at SCP-3822, apparently intended to be soothing. As time passes, the subject will begin to weaken and their body will begin to degrade while SCP-3821 slowly begins to take on a new, shinier appearance. Rust will begin to flake off, revealing shiny metal underneath. The rubber wheels will become more supple, and a velvet cushion will appear inside. At the same time, each successive manifestation of SCP-3822 will appear with fewer and fewer injuries, while looking less and less emaciated. The subject will continue to interact with SCP-382 up until just under two hours, at which point they will perish due to massive widespread organ failure. Once the subject has perished, SCP-3822 will disappear, and SCP-3821 will return to its former, derelict appearance within 30 minutes. Addendum 382A On Date Expunged my research team and I began testing to determine whether a person of sufficient youth and physical fitness could sustain interaction with SCP-382 past the two-hour mark. D-382-GTF-87I was chosen for his age, and because he had been a physical trainer prior to Data Expunged, and kept in shape throughout his incarceration at- His exposure to SCP-382 proceeded as normal, though the physical degradation appeared to progress at a slower rate than previous test subjects. After the two-hour mark, with D-382-GTF-87I still living, though in extremely poor condition, SCP-3822 manifested as usual, but did not disappear one second later. SCP-3822 then data expunged, consuming the then mummified corpse of D-382-GTF-87I, and proceeded to data expunged. Fortunately, only one other Class D was killed before SCP-3822 was terminated by Agent But the event has necessitated the amending of the SCP-3822 Special Containment Procedure somewhat. I don't feel that this warrants a change in classification level. Doctor Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.